Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, hallelujah, Lord. Yes. We get to worship him. Hallelujah. Yay. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Um, welcome to the Glasgow Farm Church. We are so excited about today. We are excited. We're excited about this hour in human history. We believe that this is the greatest hour in human history right now that we're living in. And we're going to talk about that in the message today. But it is glorious. It's a glorious time. And God is moving over the face of the earth right now. He is moving, and he is moving so powerfully that we can hardly keep up with what he's doing. Right. And so uh, it's exciting. It's exciting to be here today. Um, I'll let Dale introduce us. Okay. I'm Dale Glasgow, the pastor of the Glasgow Farm Church. This is Sharon Glasgow. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> this is Sharon Glasgow, our messenger pastor. And we are just excited to serve you all. And we love you. We desire to be here with you. And God has just poured out his sunlight, his sunshine, this perfect weather today. So celebrate everybody being here. If you know someone, go say hi, get out of your car. And if you need to pray for somebody, just go for it. And we, we want to see ministry happen in a way that would be tangible. And we want to know if you need prayer afterwards as well, that you would come forward and we would pray. There's a prayer tent here with the uh, prayers right next to it. Raise your hands, prayers. <laughs> oh, sorry. The praying, the hallelujah chorus is up front now. <laughs> Anybody, just ask for prayer. So, uh, do we want to go? Okay. Sharon has some announcements for us. All right. Um, first off, we have had 52 baptisms. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. Yes. Only only 52 I know we're more are coming in we've gotten uh, phone calls from people that are um, saying that they're going to be baptized here in the coming months and so they're waiting for family members to get here if you have been baptized and you did not get a, a certificate or a Bible uh, Deborah Burkle is going to meet you in the barn today if you're on the property she's here in the front um, and she will be in the barn to give that to you. Um, also, I wanted you to know, we ordered communion. We ordered the Lord's Supper, little cups, six weeks ago, um, maybe almost two months ago, and they're still not here. I know a lot of you are just waiting for that, um, and we can't get them here any faster. So just to let you know, that is coming. Um, also, we are going to have a concert here the second weekend in November, and it's on a... Yes, hallelujah. Um, Austin French, um, he will be doing a concert. WPER will be here. But our very own worship team will be kicked out on that night. They are going to open it up here on the property. So hallelujah. Um, also, two, two more things, and then we're going to pray. We are in need of the gravel, and so we just need you to pray that the rest of the money will come in for the gravel. And secondly, a lot of people have been asking what we'll be doing in the winter time. Um, we will have the parking taken care of because of the gravel, but we are going to get a clear tent. The reason why we're getting a clear tent is for those who still don't want to get out of their cars, will drive up and watch inside of the clear tent and they will be able to see everything that's going on. And everybody that wants to come inside will be inside the tent with heaters. That's our plan. So pray about the provisions for the tent and the provisions for the, for the gravel. Hallelujah. Okay, we're ready to go to God in prayer. So everybody, pray with me. Raise your hands up to heaven. Father, we thank you for all you do for us. We thank you for bringing us here today. Lord, we pray for all the good things that you have for us that we would be able to receive today. Lord, I pray for everyone who has a desire that they would be met with your help, with your hands. Lord, we also pray for salvations. We pray for baptisms. We pray for healings of every kind. And we pray, God, that you would use us to the fullest today to worship your name as it is in heaven. Thank you, Father, for being here. Thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice. Thank you, Holy Spirit. For pouring out on us today. We love you and we bless your holy name. Amen. Amen. Worship team. There's a 
Holy Spirit comes Holy Spirit move Holy Spirit breathe on us right now in this place Holy Spirit come Spirit breathe. Holy Spirit, rest on us. Rest on us in this place. You are good. You are kind. You are lovely and holy and righteous. There is. 
His resurrection power when we sing the name of Jesus. Resurrection power when we raise the mighty sound. So come on, let the praise give it loud. Make the empty grave resound. There is a resurrection power. It is a name. There are days I have seen.
just hearing in my spirit God saying that there's power in the returning. If you're, if you're far away from God, there's power in just turning around and running back to your daddy. And he's not just sitting waiting. He's going to run straight back to you to capture you. He's, he's waiting to capture you in his arms. There's power in the name of Jesus. You just cry it out, Jesus, no matter how far matter how far you've run you just turn around and his arms are open wide for you power in the name of Jesus
Thank you, Lord, for that worship. Thank you, worship team. David, Nikki, Kyle, thank you so much. God is so good to us. This is another perfect day, just like I said earlier. So this past week has been filled with work that God has been sending for us to do. Sharon was sent to Ellicott City, Maryland to do a revival. And it was like way over the border of Virginia. I don't know if that's okay, but God sent her there for that. And But it was heavy, hard ground that she had to to pray through, that we all, all prayed through. And then when we got there, we found out there were a lot of re- things to do. A lot, of, a lot of things. But you know what? God gave salvation on uh, last night, and we were praying for that. Someone's actually coming here to be baptized from the conference yesterday. <laughs> they're not coming today, but they're coming. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, so the harvest is far and wide. So if you guys want to go for it, go to Ellicott City and get some more. Um, so uh, she got back at 12 o'clock last night. So please pray for her that she'll be able to bring the power of the Lord. And uh, yesterday we had our men's group. Was it yesterday? It was yesterday. So our, our first men's group, if you guys weren't here, I'm sorry that you couldn't be here, but uh, next time we're having another men's group in another three weeks. So I want everybody who's a guy, if you're a teenager, you can come. You're a little guy, little man. And if you're an older man like me, you can certainly come. Anybody in between is able to come. So we want you to come and, and enjoy the fellowship. But uh, we had two testimonies that were really powerful. Sean Jennings. Sean Jennings. There he is right back here, our sound man, and also Brandon DeLeon over here beside the tractor. Uh, God brought some really powerful testimonies that really gripped our hearts, knowing that God worked in these men in such a deep way that it just blew me away. Like, how could God restore what he did? But God can fix anything. If you ask him to do it, he will do it. You just have to get on and go for the ride with him. So it's really powerful. And, um, we had food there as well. So if you guys want to come next time, we'd be fed at 8 o'clock in the morning. It would really be beneficial. Um, but we uh, want to pray for Sharon right now. And if you all would join me, God, we thank you for your blessings on us in this church. Thank you for this hour, Lord, that we know that this is the most important hour in history, that you have assigned us to work in this field of harvest and also to see so many people saved. We ask, God, that you would breathe through this message. Let Sharon speak everything you have for us. And I pray, God, that you would increase our faith today to be the saints on the earth at the end, end times. Lord, we know that you have chosen us. We receive that. We pray for salvation and baptisms today and freedom and healing. Jesus, we thank you. We love you. Amen. Thank you. You got it. Thank you, Dale. <laughs> Hallelujah. So this week, um, this is actually the probably our busiest week that we've had for the whole year that we will have or have had um, having the two weddings as well this weekend and so um, it was going into it it was like oh lord how are we going to be able to do this week Um, because there's so much so on one night it was at the beginning of of the week on tuesday night we were laying in bed and we were praying we always close our night with prayer and they all went to sleep and I just continued to pray and I was like Jesus Jesus you are like phenomenal what you're doing in this hour um just here on our farm alone is like shocking me and we've been in ministry our our whole life and I'm getting shocked at what what the Lord is doing and um last week we prayed for a woman up here under the tent and um Joni Johnson brought her and um, she had had pain um, in her head to her eyeballs for I don't know how many years, Joni? How many? For a long, long time. And she had it every day. And she had, yeah, she was pretty depressed. And um, so anyway, we prayed for her last Sunday and she has had no pain since last week. No pain. And is never without pain. Even asked the doctor to take her eyeballs out uh, so that she wouldn't have pain. But the doctor said, we can't take your eyeballs out because if we took them out, that's not going to stop your pain. It's a nerve pain. But Jesus was a great physician and Jesus can heal. So, and she has woke up, she's been sleeping all through the night as well. Anyway, we've had other people that have 
we've been praying for and God is like healing so many people right now and people are coming to Christ people are coming back to Christ people are making decisions or their call on their life they're saying yes to their call and, and we're like hearing these things every day and so I laid in bed and I was like Lord what are you doing we we've, we've been in ministry our whole life and I've never seen so many people healed I've never seen so many people getting baptized I've never seen so much activity activity and and so as I laid there I just started to cry and and I started to smell something and I said what it I smell Christmas it was like when you're a child I don't know if you remember the smell of Christmas on Christmas Eve there's a smell in the house um, when I was a little girl, we didn't have stockings. My mom would um, save shoe boxes, or she would go to a store, and she would ask for empty shoe boxes for us. And there were four of us kids, and in the shoe boxes for Christmas morning, we would wake up, and there were oranges and apples, and there was candy, things that we never got to eat because we were poor, and we had it in our boxes on Christmas morning. So we would smell like fruit, like apples and oranges, and our house never smelled like apples and oranges and and candy and stuff and I think wrapping paper might even have a smell because you know what it smells like it smells like Christmas on Christmas morning so I was laying there in bed and I smelled Christmas and so it, it really activated me because I knew that wasn't in our house and so I got up out of the bed and I said Jesus what is this what is this smell of Christmas? And and I was just so wooed by it. And and so I went downstairs and, and I, I got on my knees and I said, Lord, what is this? It's down here too. And and we haven't cooked anything. We haven't wrapped anything. There's nothing that would be producing the smell of Christmas. And then I got on my knees and I said, Jesus, what is the smell of Christmas? And and, and I just cried and I waited and, and then I became silent before him. And and all I I, I sensed in my spirit was latter rain latter rain and so I got up off my my knees really quick and I said Jesus I don't know I don't I haven't researched the latter rain I don't even know what you're saying and and so I I went on to Google really quick and I said every verse on latter rain I need to read it right now and so I I opened it up to um, the first one that I came to was James the book of James chapter 5 therefore James chapter 5 if you have your Bibles open them if you have your Bibles open them James chapter 5 verse 7 therefore be patient brethren until the coming of the Lord see how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and latter rain. All, you also be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. The coming of the Lord is at hand. The Lord is, is getting ready to come back. The harvest is being gathered at this hour, and the harvest does not come without a latter rain. Moses said that the harvest will not come in without a latter rain. In Zechariah chapter 10, verse 1, it says that the latter rain has to come. What is the latter rain? Let me, let me read you another scripture in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1. Isaiah 60 verse 1 arise shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you listen to this for behold the darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people but the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you deep darkness is going to cover the earth deep darkness within the people on the earth that the glory of God is going to be upon his people the latter rain God is going to use his people in this hour he's going to pour himself out oh he's got presence for us the next morning hallelujah hallelujah 
that night I just continued to smell Christmas and the and after I researched the latter rain that God's glory and that he would pour out on his people in order to bring in the end time harvest there's going to be a great harvest Oh, God is preparing his people right now, his church right now. Every church is not doing what they're supposed to be doing or going to fall to the ground. And every church that is going to rise up in this hour and preach the gospel, they are going to bring in souls. There's going to be thousands of people. The harvest is going to be greater than we've ever seen it on the face of the earth all over. I want to be part of that harvest. We want to be part of the greatest harvest, the greatest hour in human history. The greatest hour in human history is upon us. Oh, God is preparing his people. When I woke up the next morning, Dale said, oh, the Lord gave me the scripture in Matthew chapter 25. I said, what, what, which part of Matthew 25? Dale said, it's the parable of the talents. And the the story is this. Jesus is talking about giving the talents to to the three men. And he gives ten talents to one, five talents to another, and he gives one to the other person. And then he says, I'm going. The master leaves and he says, I want you to spend this wisely for me. And then the first guy goes and he doubles the amount of talents that he has. Now, a talent back then was like a chunk of gold or a chunk of silver. And the worth was, ama- was like huge uh, worth and the talents. And so the master comes back. The master comes back and the guy that he had given the most to now has more And the guy who has five has multiplied his. But the guy who only had one was afraid because of his unbelief. He was afraid that he would lose the one thing that he had. So he went and hid it. Actually, that verse is pretty scary at the end of it. And the Lord says, don't leave any of my verses out, Sharon. You know, there's been an hour where sometimes I would read a story and I'd think, wow, I love this story, Lord, but I don't really want to use that last verse. Uh, Because you know what? This is really hard, but you know what? This is the hour for really hard. This is the hour. I don't want to be held accountable to not read the final verse in Matthew chapter 25. It's not the final verse, but the final verse about the parable of the talents. Let me just read this to you. For the kingdom of God is like a man traveling to a far country who called his servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents. Oh, this is he gave five talents. Um, To one he gave, this is long, so I think I'm just going to get to the end here. To um, verse 30. For everyone who has, more will be given, and he who will have abundance. But from him who does not have, because he didn't use what God gave him, Even what he has will be taken away. Verse 30 is the part that I don't really want to read, but the Lord says you got to read it. And he will be cast, the unprofitable servant, into outer darkness. And there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Lord is giving us gifts right now. Are you called? Are, are Are you his servant? He is giving you gifts. He is giving you or your calling. He loves to give good, give good gifts. However, there's so many of us that take those gifts and we never use them for the glory of the Lord. Mm. So what the message is, is right now for the rest of this few minutes that we have is that at the end of the age, the Lord is going to pour out his glory, the latter rain, so that the harvest can be brought in. You need to step it up and you need to say to the Lord, I want to be part of the harvest. I want to be part of you bringing in the harvest. Lord, I'll take every talent and gift that you have right now. I will multiply it for your glory right now. I will help you to bring in the kingdom. I want to be used for your glory, God. Oh, hallelujah. And the book of Daniel Uh, Verse uh, chapter 11. But those people, Daniel chapter 11, verse 32. But the people who know their God shall be strong and they will carry out great exploits. And those of the people who understand shall instruct many for many days. They shall fall by sword and flame and captivity and plunder. 
Now, when they fall, they will be aided with little help, but many will join them by intrigue. Many will join us by intrigue. Remember the story in 2 Samuel chapter 23? And it's the story of the mighty men of valor, the mighty men of valor that was with uh, David. There were 300 of the men, but there were three men that were over everybody else. Listen to this. Second Samuel chapter 23. The first one. Oh, I should open it up real quick. Our time is running out. I'm just going to say it. So the three top men, number one guy, he is the lead chief of the mighty men of God. And it says that he took 800 men in one swipe and killed 800 men for God's people. And after that, in verse 10, it says that the Lord was the one that was his victory. What man can take 800 people all on their own? Nobody. A great exploit was being done by God's power for God's people through this man who said, yes, I'll do whatever you say. The next man and the next man, it talks about what they did and, and, and what they did. One man was fighting so hard. The second man of the mighty men of God, he was fighting the people. All of the Israelites got too afraid of the Philistines. And so they all backed off and retreated except for this one man. The one man stood there and he was fighting so hard that he couldn't ungrip his hand from his sword because he had been fighting so hard. Do you want to be the person that God is going to use in this hour and you are so gripped by what God is doing that you cannot not do what he's asking you to do, to do the kingdom work right now? Oh, I want to be a mighty one for the Lord in this hour. Oh, in Daniel chapter 11 that we just read, it says that at the end of this age, that the people of God will carry out great exploits. Do you want to carry out great exploits? Oh, my goodness. I don't want to miss on one exploit. I want to be part of this exploit crew that God is going to use on the king and the kingdom right now. Oh, that night when I was there on, on the floor and, and Christmas smells just kept on coming. And, and the Lord just ministered to me and said, Sharon, you got more presents to open. You got more presents to open. I said, God, how? Oh, Lord, we got so many people coming to you right now. How can it be greater? Oh, Sharon, you believe? Believe me for the greater glory Believe that this is the latter rain and you grab hold of anything that I ask you to do. Oh, you're going to see greater things. Oh, hallelujah. But the one thing that we have to battle right now in this hour is not the darkness that's going to cover the earth. That's not the thing that we're going to battle. It's not the darkness that consumes the people that Isaiah chapter 60 talks about. It's not the darkness that we're battling. It is we battle with ourselves and our unbelief. We battle with ourselves and unbelief of what God can do. The more you believe that he can the more he does. He gives you the talents. He gives you the gifts. And you say, yes, I'm going to use every single thing for your glory. And God says, I'll give you more. We want to be a church. Those listening and here on the grounds today. We want to take everything that God is saying right now and say, yes, I agree. Yes, and amen. And the story in Numbers, chapters 13 and 14, we've talked about this before, but God had sent the spies into the promised land. Remember that? And the 12 spies come back, and 10 of them say, it's a beautiful land. The, it's flowing with milk and honey, and the grapes are, are huge, and the figs are, are plentiful, and, and it's a, an amazing property there that you've given to us, but we'll never inhabit it because there's giants there and we're like grasshoppers. And God says to, to Moses to tell the people, as it is spoken, so shall it be. What you speak will be so. And if you say you cannot inherit the promise, 
then you won't inherit the promise. The same for us. If, if God says that, that he wants you to go and, and, and bring in the kingdom, he wants to use you right now in the latter rain, and you say, but I'm not equipped. God says, I'm giving you, I'm giving you gifts and talents. I'm giving you this time to bring in the harvest and, and use what I've given for my glory. You don't say no. You don't need to be all that. To do what God is asking you to do. He uses the least of these. He always, hallelujah, always uses the least of these to bring in his kingdom. Because so that he will be the one glorified and not us. He will always, always use the people that are the least so that he will be glorified and not us. Hallelujah. So the one thing we have to battle is our unbelief in this hour, our unbelief that God would use us, our unbelief that God is going to do a great and mighty move, the unbelief that God means what he says. We have got to increase our faith right now, our ability to believe him for this hour, the greatest hour in human history. Oh, this is the hour that God will pour out immeasurably more. I love that in Hebrews chapter 3, Paul is talking about Numbers chapter 13 and 14. So if you want to read the New Testament of what Jesus is saying about um, the people that didn't inherit the promised land, the 10 that didn't, Paul is talking here and he says, you don't ever want to be like them. You don't ever want to be like the ones that didn't believe that they would inherit the promised land. You don't ever want to be the one who has unbelief. That's another one of those scriptures. Let me find it here. James chapter 5. Is it James chapter 5? No. Hold on. It's Hebrews. We were talking about Hebrews. I want to read it. It's good. It's a whole chapter, though. The end of the chapter is that those who believe, you don't want to be that person. Just read the last verse of Hebrews chapter 3 when you get home. Basically, it's this. Faith without works is dead. Our works do not get us into heaven. Uh, it is faith alone. It is our belief in Jesus Christ that, that is our salvation. But if you do not live that you are saved, you will. if you are not living like you are saved, that is faith without works, and you don't want to be that person. You want to live what God's saying right now. You don't want to live another hour without living what God says in his word. Oh, my goodness, God is, he is the king of glory. He can do anything. He can create any miracle. He can heal any person. He can do anything. He, he can take 800 people and kill them all at once by one man's hands. He can do anything. But we have got to believe. It says faith without works is dead. Oh, what that's really saying is this. When you are connected to Jesus, when you are connected to him, you produce the fruit of him. That's the works. When you are not connected to him, you don't produce what he produces. Oh, we need to, we need to kick it up right now. We, we need to rise right now to the high calling of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We need to believe that he will do what he says he's going to do because the two things that we battle in unbelief is, number one, that God doesn't mean what he says. Number one, that God doesn't mean what he says. If you do not believe that God means what he says, get in the word. It says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We need to be in the word. We need to listen to the word. We need to eat the word. We need to consume the word so that we can have the faith. If you just come to church on Sunday morning and hope that you get faith, oh, people come to Dale and I and say, yo, lay your hand on me. I want your faith. No, you got faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You got to you gotta hear it and live it and eat it and digest it and, and you got to take it in. 
And the second thing that we battle with in our unbelief is that we fail to do the thing that he's asking us to do. We fail to live out our faith. We, we, we might read it and listen, but we fail the very thing that God is asking us to do. He's not asking you to do what you can do. He's asking you to do what you cannot do because that is when he is glorified, when he asks you to do what you cannot do. Hallelujah. I want to do what I cannot do. I want to do only what I cannot do so that he will be glorified and the latter rain will come and the harvest will come in and God will be pleased. Hallelujah. Almost every miracle comes with an impossibility. Every miracle, it's always an impossibility before. You know, when, when Joshua was taken to the people to the promised land and, and um, you know, they had already been through so many hardships and then God tells him that they've got to cross the Jordan River and it just so happens that the water is like raging at this time and, and it's like God just wants it to be like this. He wants us to be able to see. You can't cross the Jordan without me. I want the water to be even deeper so that you'll know that it is me who parts the water. But he did not part it until they put their foot into the water. God is not going to answer your, your, your prayers until you get in the water. you got to have enough faith to do the scary things. If we are always doing the things that are easy, that just brings glory to yourself. It is undeniable when it's God who works the miracles and it is an impossibility that you can do it. After they made it through the, the Jordan River, they get over there and the first city that they have got to conquer is Jericho. So they, they make it through one impossibility and then there's the next one nobody has ever won against Jericho their walls are so thick they have a impen uh, you cannot get through their wall and so God tells Joshua to circle Jericho and all they're doing is circling it and the people of Jericho are looking out their windows and thinking what are they doing but on the seventh day God told them to sound the trumpets and, and, and shout the praise of victory. Not as the walls are crumbling. Shout your praise before the wall goes down. Shout your praise before the wall goes down. Sound the trumpet in America. Shout the praise of victory over your home, over this land. Only God can win right now. Only God can save America. It is. It looks horrible. There's darkness all over America. But God, but God, he can. When we join together and we believe him and we press in and we sound the trumpets and we, we start to sing praises unto our Lord, God save America. Give us more time to bring in the harvest, Lord. Oh, right now we're going to have a, an altar call. And I am asking, Dale and I are asking that every single person here that wants to be used for the glory of God, we want you to come forward. You can stand six feet apart if that makes you feel better. Um, we want you to come forward if you want to be used at the end of this age. Do you need to increase your faith right now? I, we're just asking you to come forward and say, use me, Lord, for your glory. Increase my ability to believe you right now in this hour, in the greatest hour of human history, Lord. Use me, God. Lord, I, I ask that you will use me for great exploits to bring in the kingdom. Kingdom. 
if there's one person who doesn't know Jesus, wow, there's no way you want to miss out on this. You do not want to miss out on the greater glory that God is doing. Oh, you don't want to miss out. Oh, he, he died for you. You don't want to go another day without his resurrection power in your life. It fills you with joy. Oh, my goodness. Isaiah, the next chapter over. Oh, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has appointed, anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, to open prison doors to those who are, are bound, to comfort all who mourn, to console all those who mourn in Zion, to give beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Oh, that they would be called the sons of righteousness, the trees of righteousness. Oh, goodness, it says here in the, in the next verse is over that we will have everlasting joy. Everlasting joy will be ours. Does that mean that we're going to be happy? No, it didn't say that. It, it didn't say that we were going to have everlasting happiness. We will have everlasting joy. Hallelujah. We have got to have that so that we can go out and do what he's asking us to do. We need to continually be filled with his glory. If you have not received Christ as your personal Savior, today is the day. Today is the day Jesus is saying, say yes to me today. Surrender all. Give me your whole heart. Surrender everything. Every single desire, every part of you, surrender it all. Oh, I'll fill you with something greater. If today you have, have been wandering away from the Lord and you have been walking in unbelief, the word says you do not. Want to be walking in unbelief. Oh, the verse is about people walking in unbelief. They don't inherit the promised land. They don't inherit the promises that God has for you. Oh, you don't want to be a, an unbelieving person. You want to be a sold out person. You either want to be fully going to hell or you either want to be fully going to heaven. But you don't want to be in the middle. You don't want to be lukewarm. You don't want to be in the middle of anything. You always want to be either all the way hot or either all the way cold. And there's nothing in the middle because in the middle belongs over there with the cold. Don't be deceived. Oh, Lord God, I ask right now, Lord, that you will. Lord, we ask God that you will mark people in this audience right now for, for this latter rain. God, for the revival that will go across the whole earth, Lord. God, we ask right now that you will mark people, that you will call them, Lord, that you will send them, Lord, that they will say yes right now to what you're asking them. Oh, God, I ask for their for faith to be increased right now, God, that the unbelief will leave, that fear will leave right now in Jesus' name. Fear does not belong in a believer. Lord, I ask right now that you will wash every person here clean. Wash fear off of every person in this audience today. God, we ask that you will wipe them clean of this thing of fear. Oh, Lord, may they rise up and do great exploits in your name for your glory. Oh, Lord, God, if there's one person here that hasn't been baptized, Lord, we want to do everything that you're asking. Lord, we want to be obedient. In every way. And Lord God, I just ask right now, if there's someone that needs to be baptized, that you will let that person know that today is the day. Today is the day that they are to be baptized, God. Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. You are the King of glory. Lord, what an honor that we get to serve you. What an honor that you would be pouring yourself out right now like living rain poured out on the earth. God, use us, God. Lord, we beg of you that, that we will be mighty in your name. Oh, Lord, that we would be the mighty people of valor. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. If you made a decision, Dale and I are going to stand at the cross. Come up. Anyone who wants to be used by the Lord in the greatest hour of human history, come forward. Just stand up and declare, I want to be used, Lord, by you right now. I want to be used by you for the ends of, to the end of my life. 
if you want to surrender all, if you want to be used by him, just come forward and say, that's me, Lord. I want to carry out great exploits. Say yes. Come forward. Come forward and just stand before him, not before us, not before us, before the Lord and say, here I am. Use me, Lord. Here I am. Use me in the hour, in the greatest hour of human history. Use me. Anyone who wants to be used by the Lord, come forward. Come forward. If you are a child standing on the property and you know Jesus and you want to be used for his glory, come forward, children. Come forward, children. Come forward if you want to be used by his glory. Lord God, I ask right now that you will move all over this property. Every place that people are standing, every person that's listening by live feed. God, I ask right now, Lord, that you will touch every person who is raising their hands out to you, God. Lord, I ask that you will touch them right now. God, give them confidence right now. Increase their faith right now. Open doors for them that no man can close, God. Lord, I ask, God, that you will send them to the ends of the earth, God. Lord, I ask that you will carry out great exploits in your name for your glory in this greatest hour of human history. Lord, I ask for protection on them. God, I ask her that you will put a hedge of protection, Lord, around them. Oh, God, give them strength when the enemy comes in like a storm. Oh, Lord, give them strength to be able to hold their, their mighty um, shields of faith up. God, give them faith to hold it up when Satan tries to knock it out. Oh, God, even when they fall, Lord, help them not to be weak but to stand back up. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. God, I ask for a miracles for these people right now, God. Just erase all doubt. Erase every lie of the enemy right now. Everything that Satan has meant for harm, I ask God that you will undo wrong thinking. God, that you will undo wrong thinking right now. God, I ask for a sound mind. I ask for sound minds for everyone here right now. God, I ask Lord that you will just minister over our thinking, God. Bring it into alignment with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're going to sing and just continue to be ministered to, and then you can go to your car after the Lord has ministered to you. And Dale and I will be ready to pray for anyone. As the Spirit was moving over the waters, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on. Spirit, come move over us. 
Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit,
there's a power on my lips Even death can defy When the name of our God is lifted high Cause there is resurrection power Can we sing the name of Jesus? Resurrection power